Today we're going to be slow stitching. Welcome back to the studio, dear hearts. It's really great to have you back here. Don and I are back from our vacation and it was wonderful. It was very serene and peaceful and restive and we had a lovely time. And today uh, we're going to be doing some slow stitching with the hand dyed fabrics that we did mm, a few a few videos ago, a couple of videos ago. We're going to take those, we're going to work with those and do some stitching. So today's video is going to be about slow stitching and as you can see I've already gotten started but I wanted to share with you um, the beginning steps and the first thing I did was I took magic sizing and that's what it looks like. You could use any kind of spray starch and I took my dyed fabrics and if you haven't seen the video go back to uh, dyeing, um, let's see, what was it called? How to properly tea dye, I think, was the name of it. Anyway, uh, so we tea dyed them, and now we're going to be stitching with them today, and I just love the designs and patterns. So I used the sizing on here, I sprayed it on, and then I folded it over, and then I ironed it, because obviously the stain of the tea will come through, but we wanted to give it a nice, uh, firm kind of texture for using in our stitches today. And I just love the way these turned out. I just think they're, they're so beautiful um, and they're just gonna be so much fun to be stitching with. Um, these dark colors, you know, that just, it just comes out so wonderfully with the, uh, with my tea dyeing method. So if you haven't seen that, go back and look at that video and then iron your fabrics up with the fabric sizing or any kind of starch you can use and then we'll get started. So this first piece I got started on a little bit sooner than right now <laughs> because I just wanted to have something kind of finished that I could not not really finish but something that was along the way so that I could share with you um, exactly what <clears throat> what I was talking about and this is um, one of the dyed pieces that we did for the video and so is this one and what I wanted to do <clears throat> was to create a piece that had a juxtaposition with white fabric and then using white threads in dark brown threads. And so I just took a piece and just laid it down and then just started working on it. And I just love uh, this, this um, linear um, uh, piece here in the center, like a river running just through it. And I love using the circles too. And so I wanted to use some different kinds of circles. And I thought that what I might end up doing is putting um, either this piece here and then bringing this piece over here somehow. So we'll see how that goes. But I wanted to just keep stitching. And today's video is about just slow stitching, just taking time to just do it slowly in the moment and just uh, enjoy each stitch. And so I've asked my group for some questions and I got some great questions. Um, and so I'm going to answer those for you today too. But what first, group? what group? Oh, our Facebook group. <laughs> um, yes, our Facebook group. That would be the one. Our Facebook group is wonderful. If you want to join, you can simply just. What can they do? How do they do it? <laughs> Katarina Giglio's mixed media. Katarina Giglio mixed media group. Just Google that on your Facebook feed and um, and it will come up, right? It will come up. Yes. So, yeah. and then we have two questions that you have to answer and one of them is, um, tell us a little about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And the other one is, do you agree to the group rules? And they're pretty easy. I think you can agree to those. So anyway, so that's what that's about. So I'm just doing some just little stitches here, just super easy stitches. I don't do anything fancy. I'm not a, I'm not super, you know, I, I used to do embroidery um, years ago, didn't I? 
And I don't do that anymore. You didn't answer. Yes. <laughs> you know how chatty he can be. It's just really chatty. Actually, he was super chatty on the ship. You know, we were we were just sailing along and he was just talking to everybody. So, and he doesn't usually do that. So I was kind of surprised. But anyway, so we had a wonderful trip. It was lovely. It was very peaceful. All I did was eat and read. I think I read about a thousand pages. And um, safe. yeah, it was very safe. We wore our masks everywhere. And we had only one change of venue, so that was good. Um, good, you know, I mean, it was good for us. Probably wasn't good for that one place, but whatever. Martinique. Martinique, yeah, that's right. We wanted to go to Martinique. But that's all right. You know, we've been there before. We'll get there again. So, but it was just lovely. It was gorgeous. Uh, Caribbean blue skies. It was really beautiful. And I took a lot of photos, so if you're not following me on social media, you need to do that. But anyway, so um, I want to thank you for, for your most kind donations and for um, all of your um, wonderful um, comments um, here on, on YouTube. We so appreciate it. And we're so happy to be back and be back to working. And we have so many things to tell you today. First of all, we are moving. So we're in uh, a temporary studio spot right now. And we will be moving back to Colorado. So if you live in Colorado, you'll be able to come to Fort Collins and see us there and see the gallery and all of that, all those wonderful things, right? So we appreciate your thumbs up, your likes, your shares, and those comments mean everything to me. I really appreciate it. Um, so. And you answer every single one. Yes, I have. Yeah. As long as I can, I will do it. So there you have it right there. Um, so we're getting, getting there, aren't we? We want to thank you so much for your thumbs up because that is what really makes the channel go up in the algorithms and it, it, it allows other people to see the videos and that's the whole point in doing this was to offer some inspiration to other people. So um, I know I've said this before but I've always wanted to be able to give back and um, there are lots of ways to do it and I thought that this would be a really good way to create a channel so that I could share what I love with everyone and uh, to pass on what I've learned to other people. So thank you for that. Um, so I'd like to, I think we should start with some questions, shouldn't we? Yep. Okay, so um, first of all, let's see, what was the first question? Oh, so we have a group expert in our group, Katarina Giulio Mixed Media group. Uh, it's a private group on Facebook. There we go. Um, so we have a, a group expert. Her name is Janice and she's absolutely wonderful and she asks the best questions. So I have a bunch of questions from her um, and so we're going to answer those in a minute. But first I wanted to um, to take a look at this and see what I like. I, I think I, I really like that one there. So I think I'm just going to rip this and I'll cut it actually. And um, then we're going to play with the other side, too. I like the idea of there being this kind of texture in this, too. Um, and then I, I have a couple of other pieces that I wanted to work on today. We'll see if we're going to get to that. Um, I hope so, but we'll see. You know, it's slow stitching, so I'm not trying to get anything really done. We're just going to keep playing with it. Okay, I'm just going to use my glue stick to keep the fabric from moving around. I just don't want it going everywhere, so I'm just going to poke it on here. I like doing it this way rather than using uh, little tiny pins. I just, I don't really care for pins, so we're not going to use those. We're just going to use this. So I like that a lot. I think it looks great. And this will come over there. Now I did not iron the lace because I, I did want it to be just a, a little bit crunchy and to have some more 
energy and lift to the piece. The first question I wanted to answer was from Helen, and Helen Jackson asked, do I see it or do I feel it? And <laughs> yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I think I probably see it more than I feel it, although there are some things that I do feel, and I think that stitching is one of those things that I feel. Um, I think that painting, I think for, for me stitching, I see it and I feel it, but for me painting um, is definitely um, a seeing thing. I actually visualize what it's going to look like or what I think it should look like and then usually my muse tells me something else <laughs> sometimes. It just depends, it really depends. But, um, but yes, I think that's, that's exactly it. I think I see it and, uh, and I really like that, that I can see it, um, visualize what I want to create. So, um, and then Janice asked me, let's see, what did she ask? Oh, who are your favorite classical um, musicians? Or, yeah, what, what did she say? Classical? Music. Yeah, I think, I thought she said, well, I thought she said, what are your favorite classical musicians? But I'll have to go back and look at it now. <laughs> so we've got that. I'm just tacking this down just because I want to, uh, just to get it down and then we'll see what we want to do. But it's really hard to see what it's going to look like if it's not tacked in. And what's really wonderful about slow stitching is if you don't like something, just take the stitches up. Just, just take it up and start over again. It's like gesso, you know? I always say you can just redo it with gesso, right? It's just the way that you learn is to take something apart and redo it. And that's, that's just the best thing to do. So if we don't like it, we'll tear it apart. That's all there is. And, uh, and it'll be good. But yeah, I like the way this looks. It looks really good with it, I think. And um, we'll get this tacked down and we'll come right back. So I have both pieces stitched down now and now I'm just going to um, create some circles to bring everything together and uh, get it all stitched in. And um, so that's what I'm doing now. And I thought I would answer um, Janice's questions and she said for the new members please explain how you found the galleries that you loved and displayed your creations so that's a great question um, well some of them found me and some of them I found um, <clears throat> I had um, I was in a show called um, pure joy um, quite a while ago um, and that was at Lydia Garcia's gallery in, um, in Taos, New Mexico <clears throat> and um, she invited me to the show so that was really lovely um, and, um, and then um, some of the other galleries um, saw my work in different shows or exhibits and then asked if I wanted to uh, show my work and Meg, I have known Meg for years and years, and um, I was a, a um, I was a friend of the store for a long time, and um, and she loved my angel wings that I was doing at the time. Uh, I did a lot of spiritual work then, and um, so she just loved those, and so she she took off uh, after I left the gallery in Taos, which. Um, was Two Graces, which is a wonderful gallery. If you go there, you'll have to go and see um, what they do there because it's just wonderful. So uh, anyway, so she took off and said, I, I really want your work. And so we got together and we've been together ever since. So it's been years and years and uh, I just love it. And I'll, I'm going to be so happy to actually um, get back there and be able to 
you know, work in the same town where my gallery is again. It's going to be wonderful. So, okay, we're getting there. So my idea is to just keep doing circles and to marry everything together with thread. I love this piece. I love you love it. I think it came out really well and I have lots of other little bits and pieces here to play with but I picked these three out and uh, I one of the things I'm going to do will be to cut this in the middle and uh, to cut a piece in the middle. This piece we're not. This is going to be um, all one piece and um, I was thinking it would go something like this and I just love this grungy piece here and I thought I might stitch it onto here somehow. So I don't know exactly where it's gonna go, but I thought it would be really fun with all white thread. So I'm going to um, stitch that. Um, we're gonna stitch one piece down. But so what I, the way I do it is I go through and I look at the pieces that I really like and I start putting them together and saying, ooh, that would be yummy together. I really like this. I like the circle idea. I think circles on it would be great. Um, and then when I, these just happen to kind of fall close to each other and I thought, oh, that looks really great. I like the, I like the lace with it and then this one on top and uh, just thought it looked really, really, really yummy. I'm going to say it yummy. It's just yummy. So we're going to um, go ahead and, and do some stitching on here too while I continue to answer the question. So, um, and Janice asked me, what was it? It was about Julia Cameron, her 1992 book, The Artist's Way. How did it influence you? And if so, how? So, Yes, I, actually I became a facilitator uh, with another friend of mine and we taught Artist's Way. We get, had Artist's Way classes for quite a while and um, we both just really enjoyed doing it. Um, and the way it influenced me is it's really, she really got me back into art, um, into doing art. Um, the book I think is really wonderful if you don't journal um, or don't really like to journal, I, I would try it because I think journal writing is very effective to know who you are and where you're going. So, uh, so give it a try and see what you think and, um, you know, see what, you know, see what comes up for you. Um, I had a lot of resistance to it when I first started. Um, my friend and I did it together and it was really powerful. And so we decided that we needed to, um, to offer it to other people as well. And so that's what we did. And it, it was really a very good experience for me. And it was through the artist's way and doing the artist's way every day. I mean, there were some days when I just sat there and said, I don't want to write. I don't want to write. And my, my friend said, just write that. Just write. You don't want to write. You don't want to write. So I did. And um, after a while, I, I got to where I was, I really got a good handle on what was going on. But what I found was that I kept drawing pictures on top of my words because I didn't want anyone to see them because I'd had a bit of a, a traumatic childhood and we didn't have any privacy in our home. So I wasn't, I wasn't really happy with um, putting things down on paper. So yes, she influenced me greatly. I really think her work was very impressive. If you haven't read it, please go and do it because I think it will be very good. So there you have it. Okay, I'm just trying to decide if I want it there or to the side or down. I think I kind of like it down on, t on an angle, but we'll just try this. So. <clears throat> So the next question that Janice asked, thank you Janice, um, is uh, about Frida Kahlo and she wanted to know what, what did you say, what draws you to Frida Kahlo's art? And um, so I think um, what draws me to her art is um, are so many things. Number one, she worked um, often in excruciating pain and she created some incredible pieces of, um, of realism based on her um, 
painful experience. And I just, I think that that's just admirable for any, any person to do. Um, I also think that, um, you know, she wasn't really celebrated in her time. She had just started to create, you know, some kind of interest in her work. But it, she still, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't a megastar for sure. Um, so I, I think that I find that really interesting too, that she continued and she kept painting and doing what she wanted to do, um, even though she wasn't super famous. So I think that those, for those two reasons, I'm just, I'm quite fascinated by her. I just think she's, um, she's really amazing. And, um, and that she was, you know, with her husband for so long, and he was so famous. Um, I think that that was that's kind of remarkable for two artists to be able to live together, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> Today he's my yes man. <laughs> You're not going to say anything. <laughs> it's not like that, are you? So, so we're just tacking this down. When we finish that, we'll come right back. So. So I have everything tacked down. Now I'm just going to stitch with some black thread. And um, Janice's next question is for you too, Don. <laughs> what character qualities first attracted you to your dear husband? <clears throat> That's not for me to answer. And wife. <laughs> Uh, what attracted me to him was that he was really smart, and um, and I really loved that about him. That he's he's really so much smarter than I am in so many different ways. <clears throat> and what's your answer? Same answer. The same answer? Yeah. Really? You, you have the knowledge in the, those areas that I do not. Oh. The depth of knowledge, the humanities, and you oh. taught me a lot. Aw, thank you. That's true. That's really sweet of you to say that. <clears throat> thank you. I appreciate that. That's exactly how I feel. <clears throat> yes, the edge of this fabric is um, is making me a little nuts here. I'm going to have to turn it just slightly so that. I don't have to deal with it. There we go, that's better. There, much better. Okay, so I'm just gonna let my needle take a wander and then I'm gonna look for another question. I know Janice asked us a lot of questions. Thank you, Janice, so much. We so appreciate you. And uh, she asked, let's see. Who are your top three classical music composers? I was right. I found it. It's at the, it's at the top of the other one. Okay. So I like Beethoven. I know you love Tchaikovsky. Um, Chopin and Debussy. And who else, too, do you love? Mozart. Mozart. Yes, Mozart. Yep. I do love Chopin, too. Oh. Okay. And then she asked uh, if we were watching the Olympics. No. <laughs> I'm not an Olympics watcher. I'm sorry, Janice. I'm just not. Are you? Me? Yeah. The only thing I would really <laughs> care about would be the downhill skiing. Downhill skiing, right. Yeah, because you you love skiing. Not me. I don't do much skiing. Oh, in fact, I don't do any skiing. I lodge. I could lodge, but I don't ski. <laughs> So, so I'm just putting in some little stitches here, just allowing my needle just to go where it wants to go and however it wants to go. And, uh, and I like the way it looks. I think it looks really cool. And then we're going to fill this in, enamor this with stitches too. But uh, right now we're just going to keep doing this and we'll be back in just a minute when we get done. So I put this, the stitches in here and I'm going to come back and stitch over it. I love these little flaps, but I'm going to make this thicker and darker and then I'll probably do one here too. 
And um, on this little flower thing, I thought I would do some stitching here. Um, and I would just make some knots and just accentuate the black here at the bottom because I think it just looks really great. Um, and uh, what was the other question I wanted to, to answer? Um, oh, Janice wanted to know who my favorite um, poets are. She said she, she knows that I love Mary Oliver, which I do, I adore Mary Oliver, but who else do I like? And I, so she did not say this century or last or whenever, but um, I really, uh, so I'll give you a few. Um, so one of them is Christina Rossetti. I've always liked her work. I thought she was wonderful and um, loved the, um, yeah, like loved her her things. Yes, and um, then I suppose um, uh, Emily Dickinson I really like, and and um, and then in this century probably um, Maya Angelou. I really like her work, and uh, Nikki Giovanni I really like too. Um, those are my favorites. Do you have a favorite? No. No favorites. Oh, that's too bad. Um, Amanda Gorman, you like her? She was at the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's wonderful. So I'm just making little knots here and just adding on to this. Um, and I'll be able to show it to you in just a second. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm just going to carry on until we get to the bottom. Um, so it has a little bit more definition because I really liked that black color with this. I thought it just looked really cool. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And then I'm going to put this at the back like that and just cut it off and then start over again. Okay, then the next question from Janice was... Um, during your childhood, you say you were labeled with some derogatory names. How did you overcome that? Um, well, I don't, I don't remember being labeled with derogatory names. Um, I know my father was. Um, but I do remember um, being bullied. Um, and the eighth grade year was absolutely the worst. And I kept thinking it was going to be so much better. <laughs> but in our eighth grade class was actually annexed to the high school. So some of the high school boys weren't very nice. And how did I overcome it? Well, here's my grandmother again. Um, she told me, you know, it's all right. Just smile, do what they say, and just deal with it because you're not going to know them. They're going to all graduate and get out of there, and you're going to be fine. So don't worry about it. It'll be over with, <laughs> and you won't have to even concern yourself with it. And so I guess I was just wise enough to listen to her and just decided that that's the way it would be and uh, not to be concerned about it. And I've never had any trouble since. So there you go. That's how I did it. So. Okay, I like the way this looks. I think I want to come back down here and do a little bit more though. So, so the last question was, let's see, what was it? Uh, is there a garden at your new residence in Colorado? After you're settled and the weeds are removed, you've breathed in the glorious fresh air. What are the first plants or seeds you intend to plant? <laughs> oh my goodness, gosh. Janice, you ask the best questions, really, you do. Um, okay, first of all, we haven't found a house yet. We are getting our house ready to sell. And so we've had contractors and everything going on this week while we've been um, working on getting this video to you. Um, <clears throat> so we're still looking and uh, we hope that we find, we know, we know we're gonna find the perfect house for us. We just don't know, you know. A whole lot about it yet. We have we have an idea of what we want. We have that all written down. We have it in consciousness, so we just know that it's going to manifest for us. 
So, um, the first thing that I would plant, mm, it really depends on how big a garden I get because we just don't know at this point how big it's going to be. But we definitely need a garden space and we need a space for a little dog because we want a dog. So um, you'll be able to hear a little dog barking in a video someday <laughs> soon, hopefully. <laughs> we'll have lots of friends there who would love to take a dog so we can go on our vacations. Okay, I love the way this is turning out. I think it looks just splendid. So. Well, we're at chow for now. Can you believe it? And um, I hope you give the stitching a try and see what you think. Um, just you work small and use, um, one of my tips is just use um, a lot of contrast. So use um, darker threads and lighter threads and allow it to just show up. And you can even just use two colors and it will be fabulous. But slow stitching is just about stitching and breathing and stitching and breathing and just enjoying each moment. So uh, happy Valentine's Day. So we'll see you soon.